We'll get around to everybody's first time of asking and get around to follow-ups as best as we can. With that, we'll look for hands. Jeremiah, go ahead, please. There's a mic there for you, Jeremiah. May as well start with Jordan Morris. Uh, a couple goals, uh, both physical goals. Uh, anything we should take away from that uh, besides him just feeling good about scoring? Other than he's a tremendous player, nice young man, uh, born and raised here. Uh, lots of good storylines there. Happy, happy with that performance. Obviously, the goal right before halftime, we talked about tiny goals. Uh, but in the second half, when we brought Chu on, who was very good, by the way, uh, Jordan was over on the right. And so that's something that, you know, we had kicked around as a staff. And so that looked pretty good. So, you know, as far as Jordan's concerned, he's, he's got a big smile in there, except Preki tried to tell him that his last goal was an own goal. But, you know, he cleared that up. It's clearly Jordan had both goals. <laughs> We'll have the mic work this way. Tim, did you have one? Did I see your hand? Sure. Brian, just uh, how much did you feel like the, the preparation you had getting ready for the Club World Cup? It seemed like you guys were pretty sharp out there tonight. How, how did you feel like that played out over the time getting ready for Morocco and then the time since getting ready for the Open? Tim, that was one of the questions coming into the game. You know, because look, against Al Ali, we weren't weren't that sharp in the final third. We, you know, we created some good stuff in the middle of the field. Um, you know, had they had to do it over again, I might have tried to get one more, you know, training game in Spain when we were there just to get it going. Uh, you guys saw tonight what the team is capable of. And that's, you know, and Raul didn't even step on the field. Um, but, you know, I thought it was great. I thought it was awesome. I thought the guys were sharp. I thought they were mentally into the game. Starting at 3.30 when they walked into the locker room, everybody was real focused. And so they answered my question and you know, some of yours. Were they gonna allow the World Club World Cup, the loss there to affect them? No, they didn't. We'll have the mic keep coming this way. Jada, go ahead, please. Thanks, um, congratulations on the win, Brian. Thanks, I wanted Jay. to ask though, there, in addition to what happened at the Club World Cup, there was just was a lot of talk about just needing to win, period. Does it feel like a, a relief just to, to get a win since you haven't done that since September last year? Well, thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, look, again, there's internal pressure on people in pro sports, certainly myself included as a head coach, certainly there's always that, regardless of you, if you haven't won a game in a long time or not. Uh, the expectations of this club, Jada, are very high. I mean, we, we are a big club and we take all competition seriously. And yes, there is that pressure that comes with being a big club. And so from where I sit, Again, the pressure wasn't so much from the outside, it's internal from the coaching staff and the players. We didn't like what happened last year. We didn't like what happened in Morocco. And we are now motivated to try and replicate this type of performance and replicate it a bunch of times throughout the early part of the season to see if we can't you know, make a strong run and get the season really started on a good note. We'll see right here. Uh, how do you feel about the overall team performance, not just from Morris, but from other guys like Ladero and that kind of thing? And has it exceeded your expectations so far? Or do you think you're right on track with It's later? early. And look, it's early. <clears throat> but look, I'm happy for Steph uh, that he kept a clean sheet. That And look, Steph to be the first one to tell you that it's not just him. He didn't just keep a clean sheet. It was you know, a team effort. Uh, there were some nervy moments there towards the end of the game where we might have given up a goal. That would have been upsetting. Uh, the lesson there is how do you close out games? If it's 4 nothing, it needs to stay 4 nothing. Or if it goes to 5, it, you cannot let complacency factor in to the game. And I think that the players did that. As far as Nico, as far as uh, Nuhu, as far as Yaimar, uh, Albert, 
uh, Christian, everybody, I thought everybody played above their level tonight against a really, you know, look, it's 4 nothing. but Colorado's not a bad team. Robin Frazier's a good coach. I know they're missing a couple guys, but, you know, anytime, you know, you can you can put a performance together like that, it's it's good. John? The uh, game plan seemed to be using the wings. The wing play was pretty important for you. Jordan and Christian on either, both sides, uh, particularly had success on the right side. Was that something you particularly saw with uh, what Colorado was putting out there and bringing against you, or is that something that's, that, that was just, just your all game? us? That's just, just the way we want to play. Uh, but you look, I don't know what you guys thought about a bear. I scored the goal, but you know, his link up play, his build up play was very good. So whether you start here and go inside or you start inside and go outside, you know, each game has its own flow, but I thought a bear was good. Uh, in those moments, I think JP coming back in the middle part of the field allowed us to, to play effectively. So there are reasons for that. But yes, I thought we were very effective out wide. Nico. Uh, Brian, just kind of wanted you to take, it's always great to have a great home opener, but how do you tame you know, expectations and that the team stays hungry? Um, and then I also wanted to ask what you thought about Jackson Reagan uh, in the back with Yamar into this game. Well, the team is motivated. You go, I, I think that I don't have to say much. Uh, they're already talking after the game about RSL. So they're already into it. You know, that Jackson had a steady performance. I mean, Jackson's a, a talented young kid. He needs, you know, he needs some work, some polish, but certainly had a solid, solid game tonight. Good word of Moss here. Brian, just adding on in terms that you played wide and you talked about that. What what can you say about the play of your forwards, whether it's inside the box? It looks like even in all the goals, they're a patient play inside the box with the ball coming from the outside. Well, in order to score goals, you need to have numbers inside the box, where they are at, how they position themselves, the timing of when they get to those spots certainly is something that Preki's worked on a lot in training. You know, I think overall, I, I, I want to compliment the staff. You know, we had some new ideas leading into this year. We had talked about being a little bit too predictable last year. I think you're seeing a lot of that stuff tonight. Uh, let's see again if we can sustain that. But the fact of the matter is, is our attacking movements were very good, and it's due to the work that the coaching staff did with the players throughout preseason. Take a few more in the room here. For those on Zoom, thank you for raising your hands. I can't see you. We'll get to your questions there, beginning with Felipe Makeda. For now, we'll stay right here in the second row. Hey, Coach, talk more about how JP played today. He came out in the 80th minute. Was it playing to play in full 90, or was it always to come out at that some was, point late? That was dependent on the game. Uh, there was some debate on the bench, because I know JP uh, didn't want to come out of the game to leave him on for 90 so he could you know build some fitness but at the end of the day I think it was the right move the safe move to keep him healthy uh, we will need JP throughout the course of the year uh, he was tremendous tonight you guys uh, I mean I can't compare him with anybody I mean Ozzy was a true number six Gustav was a true number six JP does some of that defending work, some of those the, those tackles that he makes. He uses his shoulder, his body well, his strength. Uh, that could be credit to Megan and some of the strength conditioning that JP did the last nine months. And he's got good passes, good range of passes, good vision, his leadership on the field. Uh, he was tremendous. Stay right here. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Um, obviously, we saw some big minutes for especially Josh with some senior players in Morocco. But at the end of the game, we had Tensio, Danny, Leo, and Tevez all on the field together. How did you feel like they worked together? I loved it. I loved it. That's the evolution of our sport. Players are getting younger. Um, we have a lot of talented players on this squad. Uh, you know, I'm very, very happy with the team and the makeup of the group. And so giving those guys opportunities in games like this is important for their development. And that's what we want to try and continue to do. Mickey Turner. 
Uh, thanks. Uh, Coach, you talked yesterday about uh, getting off to a good start at home in particular because you dropped a lot of points uh, in the last uh, last season. So just curious on what you told the team about you know, making Lumen Field a purpose again and uh, what things you saw tonight that you can care for. Thanks for that reminder too. <laughs> Uh, I cannot say what I said in the locker room prior to the game, Mickey, because there were a few swear words involved. But, but we do want to make this a fortress, and that's kind of a generic, you know, coach's term. But we've been messaging that now for the, for the last two weeks. The coaches individually in their groups, uh, me in front of the whole team. Uh, we do want to make sure that we play well at home. And you actually are correct. There, it, it, it felt like to me, I don't have all the stats, you might have all the stats, but I felt like teams would come in here and steal points from us. So your point is valid and we're trying to correct it. Okay, we'll go up to Zoom real quick and then we'll come back for first time asks here in the room and a few follow-ups. Felipe, please go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question if you can hear me. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Coach Brian, congratulations for the win. I'm pretty sure the fans enjoy the game, even though the cold weather. I would like to ask you about the performance of Christian Rondan. Uh, during the game, he received a couple uh, phones really, really hard. And also, uh, what do you see uh, ever doing for the team? So Christian was very solid, very good. Obviously, the goal, uh, you know, that's, a, that's I think it's 37, 38, something like that, you Almost, told me, yeah. all competition. So that's a plus from a midfielder. Christian's always been very good, very influential for our team. Uh, and as far as Aver is concerned, again, I thought that was a very solid performance. Uh, he is a very talented forward. Uh, he brings a little bit of possession. Uh, obviously, his movement in the box is very good. So again, we're very, I'm very pleased that my partner Craig, who's standing in the back room, was able to make that deal. Uh, it was very, I'm very appreciative of that. That's all I'm seeing on Zoom. If there are others, please go ahead and hit that raise hand function button. But for now, we'll stay in the room. Diego, I saw you. Let's go ahead and get the mic your way. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Felicitaciones por el triunfo. Thank you. Y la mejor de la suerte para este año, la temporada de este año. Good luck this year. Thank you. Eh, ha sido un eh, debut de sueño, cuatro goles. Eh, en la temporada pasada, eh, el, el equipo eh, perdió eh, puntos en los últimos cinco minutos y en el partido de Marruecos volvió a suceder lo mismo. ¿Han analizado ese problema y han visto ya eh, la solución para el mismo? Gracias. Um, congrats on the win and good luck for the upcoming season. Uh, coach, um, uh, this has been a dream, a dream debut, debut for the team with four goals on the first game. Uh, but last season we lost many games on the last five minutes. Uh, and uh, same thing happened in Marruecos as well, in Morocco as well. So um, have you analyzed that particular area of the game and what is your thought about that? Thank you for that reminder. <laughs> that will always keep, me, keep us going. Uh, you know, giving up games in the last minute, obviously, you know, it didn't happen this game. What I would tell you, how I would answer your question is the second goal was very important. The timing of the second goal was very important. Because one nothing at halftime, okay, you know. And we have discussed whether we play out from back on, playing out from the back from goal kicks with Stefan Fry to try and play and keep possession, or play a little bit more direct. And that decision to play more direct and you know, pick up the second piece, the second balls, ended up, I'm sorry, I just wrote a lot of words. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, but that was very important. And I think some of those little, you know, ideas 
of trying to close out the half and trying to close out the end of games are important. Gracias para tu pregunta. Okay. Um, eh, gracias por la pregunta y hacerme recordar otra vez ese tema acerca de. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it's good to see you back there. Thank you. Hey, coach. Um, the first three goals, at least, all came from either a transition play or a little bit more direct play. Um, Notice Colorado was playing a pretty high, uh, high back line and wasn't pressing a ton in midfield. Um, you guys got a few other good looks from the transition and direct play. How much of that was part of the game plan coming into the game, and how much was a response to what Colorado was offering you? Yeah, I may disagree a little bit. I mean, Colorado, I mean, Bassett was pressing us every time the ball went negative. I thought there were some good moments where they had some pressure, but we were able to play out of it. Uh, part of that, if, you, if the team does move up forward to press you, it did look like they had a high line. But you know, a lot of that wasn't scouting Colorado. This is what we we're going to do because we didn't have much film on them. We had to actually go back to last year to watch some of the tendencies that they might have had. You know, they had the new center back in there. Uh, I think it's all due just to the strengths of our team. I mean, we're a very good transition team. Uh, Jordan and Christian certainly exemplify two guys that never in transition. Uh, but for us, transition doesn't just mean when you're pinned back and you dump long balls over the top against the high line. It's also any time you win possession of the ball, can we play our first pass forward? Those are, again, some of the things that we worked on in preseason. Joe Uh You were featured on the TiVo today. I'll just get your thoughts on that. And if you could let us know uh, if you're taking DJ um, no, I am not. I appreciate the ECS. Thank you, guys. Uh, they gave me a chain before the game, and I had no idea what it was about. I had no idea. I put it in my pocket because I put it in my pocket because I wasn't going to wear it. Uh, I think Jane has photos of me, though, uh, putting it on out of respect to uh, the ECS and that TIFO. Uh, I appreciate that very much. Uh, you know, I think it's uh, it was a nice gesture. I'll just put it that way. Don't call it a comeback. Who's next for questions? Yeah, okay, here you go. Coach, two quick ones. Uh, you mentioned before the game that uh, Barrios against Nuhu was the price of admission. Just want to get your take on that duel. And then there was nuances on the set pieces, corners. Uh, although there were no goals, it seemed like they were dangerous. Just want to get your takes on it. Yeah, I mean, again, the first corner kick didn't come off how we wanted it to, but the delivery, you know, our attacking movements, that's a renewed emphasis again, just to be a little bit better in that in that department. And yeah, Barrios is a is a very good player, uh, but knew who is a even better defender. Miles, go ahead. Yeah. Brian, just going back to your comment about you being a good transition team and that ability to get that first pass. Can you, do you mind if you would please just talk about how Albert Rusnick and his partnership with Jao Paulo were able to have you be a good transition team today? Well, they're two experienced players, both designated players. I mean, they, 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 they are good. It fits Albert in many situations, uh, playing a little bit deeper than maybe he normally would. Uh, he's very good in possession. He sees all the passes, all the right passes. So for me, it's a it's a very good working pair. Uh, so he he again was one of those guys that you know maybe not on the stat sheet, but certainly had a solid performance. One guy that wasn't on the stat sheet, Nicholas Lavero. Can you just talk about how? He helped with that middle of the field. Well, maybe it wasn't on the stat sheet, but you know his his discipline within our new structure. You know the ball that came across for Jordan's goal, you know was one, and then the first goal I believe that, that Christian scored at the back post. You know Nico had changed position with Christian, so Christian was on the left and Nico was on the right. So 
I don't mind if Nico goes around the field as long as his teammates know where he's at and they compensate or vice versa. If Christian comes over here, Nico has to take his spot. It's part of that uh, fluidity that I like and I think it, it fits Nico because Nico loves finding the ball. We've, we've tried to be a little bit more disciplined. He's buying into it. And, you know, those two moments exemplify, uh, you know, even, even a Bears goal. He was in the right place. So credit to him. All right, last couple with Nico here. Hey, Brian, so tremendous win tonight. Uh, going into the next game, it's going to be against RSL. Uh, we had some trouble finding our way against them last season. So I was just wondering what are some takeaways from tonight's game other than scoring a ton of goals, like in the locker room or tactics-wise? Yeah, well, we'll start working on RSL uh, now. We obviously watched their game last night, so we have a little bit more information on them. Uh, the coaches will start digging in there. I know Jorge and, and John have been working on film, specific film for us. We'll devise a game plan tomorrow. We have a regen session, and then I'll give the guys a day off, and then we'll be prepared for them. Yeah, they, they, they came in the playoff. They kicked us out of the playoffs two years ago. I uh, had some trouble with them. Again, well-coached well -coached team, good team. Good result for them yesterday, away from home. So it'll be, it'll be a tough game. Miss anybody?